All right, folks, a quick update here for nyccnc.com. I uh, am starting a new project, which I'll post some details on uh, here in the coming weeks. And I, I know I've got quite a few projects in the air on the blog right now, so if anyone has any questions about the other projects outstanding, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. I posted a new email address for the blog on the home page, which is nyccnc.com at gmail.com. Um, but like I said, got a few projects in the air, but wanted to introduce this new project by focusing on uh, the quality of a finish. I just just uh, achieved on a piece of 6061 aluminum that I'm really happy with and frankly really proud of. And I know some people out there doubt the TEGS uh, capabilities, um, partially with respect to accuracy, but I think more so with respect to rigidity and overall ability to get good results with uh, any of the metals. And, and I have focused most of my efforts here on aluminum. I, I recognize steel is certainly a different uh, challenge, but nevertheless, wanted to zoom in here first on a piece of 6061, which you see sitting here, and then I'll talk a little bit more about the methods I use to achieve the thing. All right, so I've got a piece of 3 quarter inch uh, bar stock of 6061. I've ordered this, I think this is from OnlineMetals.com. I've been experimenting with a couple of the different online metal suppliers. Speedy Metals and Online Metals, I think, are the two I've used so far. Um, and uh, as you can see here, the 6061, when, you come, when it comes from the foundry, usually has small marks on it and such. Um, I needed to face off this uh, piece of aluminum because if you see on the corners, even though this is square bar stock, the corners do have a small bevel, and I want this to be perfectly square, so I'm going to just go ahead and I, I figured out I think I need to take off about 35 thousandths to get it down to uh, a true square to get rid of the uh, radius or bevel around the corner, so what I've done here, and I'm now turning it over to the side that I have milled, and I'll do my best here to get the camera angle so that you can appreciate it. I know it can be tricky uh, with the camera in general, let alone once it gets put up on YouTube, but um, I've gone ahead and removed 30 thousandths of this top side here just as an experiment, and if you'll notice on the sort of left half, I've still got a clear tool path, and on the right path, I've uh, gone ahead and used some of what you see here in the background, which is 3M Scotch-Brite hand pads to try and polish this down to a better finish. Once again, just experimenting here for this new project, but uh, first off, what I want to do is just highlight the fact that I was using a four-flute high-speed steel end mill, which I purchased from Enco, at 5,000 uh, RPM, cutting at uh, 7 inches per minute on my machine and taking a 30,000th inch cut. And um, you're not going to be able to appreciate this, but I just want to emphasize that this cut here on the left, before I've done anything in terms of polishing, it's just straight off the mill is incredibly smooth. You definitely can still see the tool path and if you take a, a loop and look up close you can still see some of the grooves so perhaps there's even more room to uh, improve there but once again incredibly smooth and looks great. What I've done here on the right hand side is first started with some of the 7447 plus scotch bright pads which I also purchased from Enco. I think, uh, I think they're a little under a dollar a pad and they come 20 to a box so um, you, you know I would say that that's pretty cheap for what you get um, and I've rubbed that down pretty hard and then what I did was use a 7445 which is I think the most fine or close to the most fine that they come in to really try and polish that down and once again it can be tricky to appreciate the finish here given that uh, it's being recorded with a camera and then uploaded to YouTube but um, you know, it's not a mirrored finish, it's close, you can definitely see reflections, but more importantly, it is silky smooth, and that's really what I'm going for here. So, uh, really happy with that kind of quality, and uh, I've been doing this by hand. I'm trying to figure out a way of alternating the brush strokes back and forth in some sort of a mechanical fashion to, to make it easier on my arms. Um, the closest I've come is a drill with a modified head on the drill to polish it, or I could even put that in the mill, but obviously with the drill that creates a circular pattern. Um, so I want to keep the grain going this way. So we'll see what I come up with, but 
in the meantime, just wanted to share a, a pretty positive experience that I'm uh, pretty excited about for all you other uh, hobby CNCists. So, uh, as some final looks at the part here, enjoy, and uh, we'll see you next episode. Thanks.